Good morning. Welcome to today's webcast, Fundamentals of a Successful Turnaround. I'm Mike Rhodes, Managing Editor of Hydrocarbon Processing, and I will be your moderator today. During today's webcast, there will be two presentations. First, Water and Vapor Solutions Maintenance Turnaround Events, given by Evoqua Water Technologies. And then, Proper Planning to Mitigate Risk, Reduce Operating Costs, and Increase Efficiencies, presented by Agreco. Evoqua Water Technologies' presentation will focus on how water and vapor emissions play a critical role in plant turnaround and maintenance events. Turnaround teams are focused on safety, schedule, compliance, and budgets during a turnaround where water and vapor control can be an afterthought. With stringent emissions limits and wastewater constituent loading on plant assets, turnaround events can pose challenges for operators. Incorporating a, excuse me, incorporating a reliable water and vapor treatment specialist within the front end planning process can help support a successful turnaround. You will learn how multi-solution providers such as Evoqua can mitigate compliance pitfalls and support turnaround events to ensure a safe and timely event occurs. We will focus on the following areas. Thermal oxidizer flareless turnaround events and vapor control, mobile wastewater asset control support. 30 years ago, equipment was owned and maintained by the site owner. The equipment was expensive to maintain and added additional overhead. Additionally, there was no return on capital. In the mid-90s, accounting laws changed, making rentals favorable to CapEx. This has created the rental industry as we know it today, with a keen focus on price, timely deliveries, and cost reporting. Leading with price has resulted in fewer services, creating a knowledge gap where owners order from a catalog with limited input from the supplier. Clients need more from a supplier than a spec sheet. They need a technical resource with value-added deliverables. We are going to discuss how proper planning can lead to a successful turnaround by mitigating risk, reducing costs, and increasing efficiencies. Joining us for today's webcast are Zach Nichols, Senior Director, HPI Vertical Market, Bob Wenta, Business Development Manager, HPI Vertical Market, and Patrick Greer, Product SME, Vapor Degassing from Evoqua. And from Agreco, Ryan Nance, Turnaround Services Sector Manager, and Barney Smith, Business Development Manager, Turnaround Services. Zach Nichols is the Senior Director of Heavy Industry Vertical Markets for Evoqua Water Technologies. Along with oversight of the power, CPI, and food customer vertical markets, Zach has specific responsibility for downstream refining and renewable energy. Prior to joining Evoqua in 2018, Mr. Nichols was the Chief Financial Officer of ProAct Services Corporation, now a wholly owned subsidiary of Evoqua. He has held the title of CFO and COO in other private equity-based companies. Bob Wenta is the Business Development Director for the HPI CPI markets for Evoqua Water Technologies. He has worked for Evoqua and its predecessor companies for more than 20 years in the roles of Product Manager, Process Manager, Business Line Director, and VP of Sales and Process. Bob has worked predominantly in the petroleum market since the early 2000s and is a wastewater SME for Evoqua's heavy industry division. Patrick is a vapor control SME and field service engineer for Evoqua Water Technologies, specializing in thermal destruction of VOCs. He started with ProAct, now a wholly owned subsidiary of Evoqua, in 2016 as a field project engineer. Patrick graduated with a Bachelor of Science in Chemical Engineering from South Dakota School of Mines and Technology. Ryan Nance is a Greco's turnaround sector manager. In his role, Ryan directly manages a team of dedicated, uh, dedicated team to focusing on identifying and capitalizing on these critical cyclical opportunities while prioritizing the highest levels of flawless execution on these critical projects. 
Ryan is a product both personally and professionally of the midstream and downstream world of the oil and gas sector. Before rejoining Agreco, he served as a national account manager for United Site Services. While previously at Agreco, Ryan was a local and then regional account manager. He has also operated in inside sales and project controls for chart energy and chemicals. Ryan earned a bachelor's degree in marketing from the University of Alabama, Birmingham, while being a member of the 2012 Conference USA Baseball Champions. He is also armed with an MBA from Sam Houston Uni State University. Barney Smith has more than 20 years of experience in the petrochemical and refining industry in roles of increasing complexity. In his current role, he seeks out ways for Greco's North American Turnaround Services Group to assist its customers with innovative temporary utility solutions designed to increase safety, effect turnaround scope, and reduce schedules and cost. He also specializes in working with plants on complex engineered solutions related to process bottlenecks and seasonal cooling limitations. Barney holds his BBA in uh, Petroleum Land Management from the University of Louisiana Lafayette. Okay, before we get started, let's review some general housekeeping notes. Following the presentation, we will have a short question and answer session. You can participate in the Q&A session during the presentation by typing your question into the Q&A box located on the bottom left corner of your screen and then click the Submit button. You may enlarge the slide window at any time by clicking on the arrows on the top right corner of the slide area. The slides will advance automatically throughout the event. If you are experiencing problems with the program, please press F5 on your keyboard to refresh the presentation. You can also visit the webcast help guide by clicking on the help button during the slide window. All right, we're ready to get started. I'm gonna turn the time over to Zach Nichols. Thank you very much, Mike. Good morning, everyone. First and foremost, I'd like to welcome you to today's turnaround webinar and say thank you for your time and participation. We are Avoco Water Technologies, and we'll be focusing the discussion this morning towards water and wastewater, as well as vapor emission impacts during a planned turnaround and outage. As Mike mentioned, I'm Zach Nichols. I'm our Senior Director of Downstream Refining Vertical Market, and we're also led by Bob Winta, our Business Development Director for the Downstream Refining segment, as well as Patrick Greer with our engineering team and vapor degassing subject matter expert. If we can go to the next slide, please. So we'd like to begin with a brief overview of who we are. We are a global leader in the water business today where our purpose is to transform water and enrich life. Now we have a set of unique offerings that combine both state-of-the-art equipment technology as well as first-class service. Today, as you can see on this slide, we have over 200,000 installations worldwide with a breadth of over 4,200 employees at 164 of our global locations. We are a publicly traded entity on the New York Stock Exchange as Aqua. And as a $1.4 billion company, we truly pride ourselves in having the full water cycle participation. And that starts from testing to process design and engineering to in-house equipment manufacturing, as well as startup and commissioning all the way through outsourced operations and service. So Bob, Patrick, and I serve our heavy industry as well as our proact environmental solutions divisions, which encompasses our downstream refining segment, chemical processing, food, power, and renewable energy vertical markets. But specifically as it relates to downstream refining, we've supported the downstream refining segment within our 100 year legacy with first class outsourced services, as well as our specific brands and capital equipment that many of you probably recognize. And that starts with our process water assets with our Vantage and Ion Pure brands to our wastewater brands such as Davco, JetTech, Tobro, as well as our Envirex brand, which many of you see day in and day out within your primary wastewater treatment plants, 
with API separators and DAF units. But moving to service, we currently have over 29 fully outsourced water agreements within the U.S. refining market, where our on-site personnel and our contracts provide for a guarantee of quantity and quality of water produced for that refinery. And lastly, we're proud of the infrastructure that we've built surrounding our branch network across the country and our various field service technicians and their expertise to support the refining industry with mobile assets for planned and unplanned events. Next slide, please. So we recognize that plant turnarounds are cumbersome and they take years and years of detailed planning. We also appreciate the fact that in a typical turnaround of a process unit, refiners and operators are reluctant to take down process water assets as well as wastewater assets. So today we really wanna highlight our mobile solutions that can be used to take advantage of this timing of a turnaround event and provide redundant processing, increased capacity with that additional loading that are on those plant assets, and even full process replacements with water and wastewater asset shutdown events. Now, our experience in portfolio, as you can see from the bottom of this slide, really covers the full life cycle of water and vapor in a refinery, all the way from raw water to utility water to wastewater and vapor emissions. Within our years of experience, we've gained insights into turnaround events and upsets with our mobile assets and solutions. And we've built a nice base of case studies and histories where we're actually gonna highlight two of those examples in today's webinar. So with that being said, I will now hand it over to Bob Winta to discuss our water and wastewater outages and shutdowns. Thanks, Zach. Hello everyone and thanks for being with us this morning. As Zach already mentioned, there are certain pain points like the advanced planning needs and others associated with the turnarounds and outages. I'd like to highlight a few others though for you today. For facilities lacking in-place redundancy, normal critical equipment would be backstopped with shelf spares. Sometimes those shelf spares aren't always replaced when they're used. So when the inevitable happens, things go down and the shelf spare isn't there. Evoqua's yard assets can support a quick response. And likely due to reduced investment in the wastewater treatment plant during these difficult economic times for the refineries, we've seen a sustained demand for mobile deoiling assets. Again, probably the lack of maintenance is driving this. But Evoqua's yard assets have value for these urgent or semi-urgent needs. Evoqua's line of assets are designed for high rate process operation to minimize the space needs, which are at a premium during the turnarounds. From deoiling to mobile comag clarification and high rate biological systems, such as IPAC. Evoqua has a broad range of assets to allow turnaround activities to include much needed repairs and upgrades on existing equipment without shutting the plant down to a point where we cannot process the wastewater. And finally, we all know there can be an increased demand for steam production during the turnarounds, whether for steam out, boil out on infrastructure or miscellaneous cleaning of tanks and vessels for maintenance activities. Our full line of Vantage RO and Ion Pure mobile demon assets to help boost boiler, boiler feed water production cover the turnaround or upgrade need. So as we can see here on the slide, Evoqua has an extensive asset portfolio with mobile high rate clarification, again, via Comeg, filtration in several forms from sand to ultrafiltration, and several approaches for mobile or temporary wastewater treatment, as well as solids handling with our JWI filter press line. So I wanted to offer a case history, as Zach mentioned, the first one on a project executed with a refinery to enhance their ability to address the second bullet above, that being a lack of redundancy in their wastewater treatment plant. So please go to the next uh, slide for the case history. This case history is about a refinery that like many refineries has a very space constrained wastewater treatment plant. Their long-term goal was to reduce effluent suspended solids from the clarifiers 
keeping the tertiary filters at peak efficiency, even when running at full production on opportunity crudes and during the wet season. In addition, they wanted to make the upgrade during a partial outage at the refinery, but under normal flow and load conditions. This all had to be done without adding another aeration basin or clarifier because they just didn't have the space. In other words, the treatment capacity of the activated sludge plant needed to be increased or intensified during normal operation and under normal loading conditions. Quite a challenge, as you can imagine. So our solution was to incorporate what we call the biomag process into that plant's operation, all while the plant was in full operation. So you can see a small red square in the uh, about the center of the picture on the right next to the aeration basins. That represents the building that houses all of the additional equipment needed for the biomag operation. Only the magnetite silo, which is 12 feet in diameter, was outside of that building. So the biomag process enhanced the intensity of the treatment, taking advantage of all the available footprint and the existing assets. So in the biomag process, the magnetite is added to the activated sludge process to ballot or to weight down the biological flocks. That causes them to settle much faster in the clarifiers. It allows the operator to retain more biological mass in the aeration plant and thereby allows more waste to be treated in the same footprint, all because it settles more reliably and more quickly. So if you have reliable, fast settling sludge, you treat more in the same space. The Biomag ensures the plant keeps all of the bugs they need to process the waste and ensure the highest effluent quality out of the clarifiers at the same time. So for the project, Evoqua collaborated with the client's corporate and plant engineering staff to agree on a detailed implementation strategy. Once that was agreed, uh, the strategy was put into effect. And from conceptual discussions to the Biomag effluent water production in nine months, that included the engineering, fabrication, delivery, installation, commissioning, and startup. So this isn't a small plant, this is a multi-trained biomag system to meet the needs of this large wastewater treatment plant flow and load. There was a seamless transition to the current operation to biomag. That transition only consisted of adding the magnetite, magnetite to the return activated sludge line and seeding the bioreactors until they reached the proper amount uh, of magnetite in the plant. And yes, the magnetite is recovered. Uh, using a shear mill to dislodge the magnetite from the biological flocks and then a magnetic drum to recover it out of the waste activated sludge line. And we reincorporate the bio of uh, the magnetite back into the biological system. And we're currently working on implementing another biomag strategy for a refinery to in place to replace their entire wastewater treatment plant while it's in operation in the exact same footprint. So a bit of a choreography uh, to that project, but with Biomag, we'll be able to do it. So that's all I have for today. I'm gonna hand it over to Patrick Greer, who's gonna walk us through vapor controls during, tur during turnarounds and outages and cover another case history for you. So thank you once again. All right, thanks, Bob. And when we're talking about vapor control, I first wanna to touch back onto wastewater. A lot of times if you're treating a wastewater stream with high VOCs, you'll end up generating additional emissions that need control. Avoqua also offers point source control for these emissions. This allows one contractor to handle the entire scope, reducing personnel on site and the potential for communication errors. Avoqua's large fleet of carbon absorbers from 180 pound drums to 20,000 pound roll off bins which comes with in-house regeneration, allows us to maintain cradle-to-grave tracking for these emissions control. We also have three-phase scrubbers that are ideal for streams with higher VOCs or unique contaminants. Speaking of unique contaminants, safety is always our number one priority. This begins with rigorous in-house technician training, followed by detailed equipment design with safety in mind, this includes the installation of PRVs, knockouts, flame and detonation arresters as required on our units. 
and we tie this all in with our engineering support. Our engineering team will do a treatability report for these turnaround cross, uh, projects that reviews the chemical compatibility, the NSPA gas group ratings, the combustion reaction byproduct, and the exposure limit of the contaminants of the stream that we're treating. One pain point that is continuously getting more stringent due to increasing EPA regulations are flare glass limits flare gas limit. Two of these common limits are VOC emissions and BTU limits. The VOC emissions typically come into play due to a flare's roughly 98% BRE. Well, when you're pushing more VOCs at the flare due to a turnaround event, the VOCs in the exhaust will increase. This is in comparison to our in-house combustion units, which have a greater than 99.9% DRE. So this additional destruction decreases the VOCs in the exhaust of your treatment system. The second limit for the BTU limits typically takes place when you're purging a unit with nitrogen. However, nitrogen does not burn. And so you will have a prevented combustion in your flare. However, our thermal oxidizers have an oversized burner and vaporizer that is able to maintain a temperature of 1400 degrees Fahrenheit or higher, which allows us to maintain complete destruction even in the presence of nitrogen. These flare gas limits are typically set by state or federal regulations. However, one regulation that is specific to refineries is the EPA's requirement for all fuel gas burners to have a continuous emissions monitoring system. However, this is not feasible for temporary or mobile solutions. Instead, the EPA allows you to have an alternative monitoring program, or AMP for short, that has to be submitted and approved. Avoqua has these programs and all of our combustion equipment falls underneath our AMP so we can burn these fuel gases while still staying in compliance, even if H2S is present. We also have air quality management district permits throughout California and are very familiar with the permitting process. And our engineering team is available to help with any permitting requirements that take place during the planning, planning process. One of the other main pain points that has been mentioned previously is schedule creep. With vapor control, this typically takes place due to depressurization timing not being accurate. However, our engineering team uses an iterative modeling process to ensure the proposed solution is actu actually feasible with the specified connection, valves, and piping. And we can suggest the changes and correct equipment needed to perform the depressurization in the time allotted. Some additional vapor applications, one of the most overlooked pollutant generation during a turnaround is vacuum trucks. The exhaust of a vacuum truck typically has very high VOCs to the point where carbon alone is not necessarily enough to treat it. Instead, we have our internal combustion engine units or ICE units. These pair very well with our vacuum trucks and can actually provide additional vacuum and improve the operation of the vacuum truck. Without turning the pump of the vacuum truck on, our ICE units can provide 18 inches of mercury or higher vacuum by themselves. They also have a very quick response time that allows them to respond to any changes in the process the vacuum truck might introduce. These ice units also pair very well for tank venting during stripping and filling for maintenance events. However, if we need additional BTU capacity, we also have thermal oxidizers all the way up to 50 million BTUs per hour. We can wrap all this together to provide a flareless turnaround where our 50 million BTU TO was built specifically for turnarounds in mind, where it has the communication and safety interlocks built into the PLC to talk to the facility plant. It has dual detonation arresters and Teflon components for safety. It also has a 100 horsepower process blower, which allows us to fully pull the maximum process through a 
units without slowdown. This all pairs with the engineering support for the treatability reports, allowing us to do the vapor control on time and safe. We also offer capital solutions from a full carbon and resin system with service to thermal, recuperative, or catalytic oxidizers. Now, for one of our case studies, we were working with a large plant in the US that had to shut down their on-site thermal oxidizer for five-year maintenance. However, they still had to treat the vapors coming to their unit because they couldn't turn off the facility. However, previously that they did this, the high concentration of corrosives in the stream caused severe leakage. And, and that was a main concern for this new project. So we worked directly with their corporate and plant engineers and our engineering team developed a treatability report looking over the chemical compatibility as well as gas group ratings and reaction byproducts and determined a solution where we could do this activity safely. So our solution was to provide our 25 million BTU thermal oxidizer for the vapor control during the down. However, prior to mobilization, we converted all our soft components to Teflon. This includes all our gaskets, all our expansion joints, as well as the blower seals. But doing these things allowed us four weeks of runtime with no down and no leaks. So that's all I have for vapor control. Zach, I'll pass it back off to you. Thank you, Patrick. And again, thank you all for your time this morning. We really look forward to answering your questions during the Q&A section. Come in already, so let's start with that, and I hope our panel is ready to go. Uh, here's the first one. Uh, if the VOCs contain lots of air, Will it need a detonation arrester before going to a thermal oxidizer? Uh, how do you handle such streams safely? Yeah, so this is Patrick Greer with the VOQA. I can take that question. Uh, so good practice when dealing with a thermal oxidizer because the chamber is a controlled combustion reaction. You always essentially have a flame in the chamber. So you always want a flame or detonation arrestor on the inlet to that chamber to prevent anything from coming back. All of our thermal oxidizers use dual protection, meaning they have at least a detonation arrestor on the inlet that is rated to gas group D, and at least a flame arrestor at the chamber that is rated to gas group D as well. We also have our engineering team that can review the NFPA gas group rating for the components that we're actually putting through combustion. And if need be, we have gas group C detonation arresters and gas group B e detonation arresters to ensure that we maintain adequate mechanical protection for this uh, stream. Also, you can increase the flow through the process piping to ensure that the uh, velocity inside the pipe is above the flame velocity of the chemicals that you are burning. So those are how you handle those two type of uh, instances and maintain a safe uh, process. Okay, sounds good. Uh, here's another question, great presentation. Uh, Evoqua has a broad array of process equipment and you have mentioned Biomag for upgrades. Do you do any mobile or urgent respond wastewater treatment? Ah, uh, yeah, this is Bob Wenta. I can take that question on, on behalf of Evoqua. Thanks, Mike. Uh, absolutely, Evoqua's portfolio can support wastewater turnarounds in many ways. If on the deoiling side, uh, we have lancy type corrugated plate interceptors or separators uh, we have DAFs and DNFs, uh, closed top for vapor controls where needed. And as Patrick talked about, we have the vapor control equipment to go along with the deoiling solution, which in certain places is critical. And uh, we're gearing up to support a turnaround in which 
case we're, we're um, supporting an outage on the DNF. So we have a, a temporary or mobile DNF along with all of the, uh, the VOC and vapor control equipment to go along with not only the DNF, but the flock tank up front and an effluent equalization tank. And then on the biological side, uh, we put together full wastewater treatment plants uh, with temporary full-scale biological and deoiling and the post-biological uh, clarification, clarification uh, which we normally use dissolved air flotation for. And that can be open top normally after the biological process. So we have one system uh, in place now. It's, it's a full-scale wastewater plant. Uh, it was intended to be temporary, uh, but it's been in place now for three years. And they're actually looking for a second train. So we have the, the capability to go full scale and, and across the entire process portfolio needed on wastewater. And we're currently designing another fast response solution like it uh, for a customer that has a need to treat uh, an unexpected flow of wastewater, so to speak. And again, I'd mentioned that the dissolved air flotation or dissolved nitrogen flotation for clarification upgrades has become very popular. So uh, finally, we also have mobile dewatering to support that. So pretty much the whole gamut of uh, wastewater treatment can be supported uh, from a mobile standpoint. Thanks. Okay, great one. Uh, another question real fast here. I think we have time for one or two more. Uh, how early in the turnaround do you engage with customers? Here, uh, as it relates to vapor control, how do you determine the correct solution for the refinery wastewater storage tank or process unit application? So to be quick about this one, um, basically we have a applications engineering team that will review the process, look at the concentration, and then do a comparison between all our equipment, whether it's carbon, shrubber, or combustion. Um, and we will look at what the most economic and most operational friendly options are, and we will then provide our recommendation from there. And if the customer wants multiple options, we will provide multiple options. If they want to see the difference between a carbon unit and an ice unit, we will provide that. Um, but we'll always kind of give our recommendation based on flow rates and, uh, concentration of VOCs coming in. That's it, thank you. Okay, great great comments, guys. We appreciate that. And thanks to our audience for submitting your questions. We will follow up uh, after this uh, panel with answers if we didn't answer your question um, verbally here. We would like to thank our audience for attending today's webcast. We would also like to thank Greco and Evoqua for putting together this timely and informative presentation.